good afternoon to you and you're very much welcome to the Civic Space TV show. And we are here shooting the women's show. I haven't seen you in about two weeks. And I am glad that I am back hosting the show and I hope that Maria and Gloria Nawai did a great job while I was away. So today's show is yet another interesting one. So on Friday, on Friday, uh, the Vice Guild President of Makere University, Miss Noella Awal, under the auspice of her office, organized a women's leadership symposium. And it had one of the most amazing panels gracing it. It had the likes of Miss Sarah Birete, who you have met, the likes of Ambassador Edith Sempala, Stella Nyanzi, to mention but a few. And so these gallant women woke up in the morning, <laughs> dressed up, wore their makeup, wore their masks, and went to Mackay University. And at the entrance, they were met as usual by the Uganda police force. The premises had been sealed off. And yeah, it doesn't take rocket science to, to figure out that the event did not take place. So within the context of shrinking space, shrinking civic space, but also shrinking space for women's participation, we delve into a conversation around the place of women in governance, the place of women in society, but also the space of women in regard to building national discourse. And so joining me on the panel today are part of the chest people. Right to my uh, right hand side is Ambassador Edith Sempala from uh, the Alliance for National Transformation. I also have on the panel Rebecca Juna, who works for Shema Development Foundation. On the panel, we, are, we also have the Vice Guild President of Mackay University, Miss Noella Awal, under whose office this event was held. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have Miss Shamim, who is in charge of academics at Mackay University. So ladies, you're very much welcome to this panel. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, thank you. And we will start right with Noella. Please walk us through, why did you even think of having a symposium? And did it occur to you that it would be blocked? <laughs> um, I, my, my, my inspiration for this symposium was the participation of ladies in the guild leadership, right from the GRC level, school level, to the guild leadership itself. In history, Makere has had 86 guild presidents and only four females. On top of that, the participation of females in the GRC is low. Um, we have a female caucus that I lead for the ladies in the house. And out of the 103 members in the house, we only have 28 women. So I felt like this would inspire me to um, start something that would mentor more girls into joining leadership instead of them having a free pass of maybe um, it would be made compulsory for each school to send a female alongside a male. It would relax so many ladies, especially where she's the only female in the race. She would know I have a straight pass. But if they are mentored, they would be taught how to fight to be like these people, to occupy these spaces. And I felt like the best people to do so were the ladies out there that had been there the role models of the generation. Each generation had its role models, and I felt like the ladies had invited were in the right space to inspire these girls to make it there. I didn't picture that my event would be cancelled or anything. You really did not see this coming. Yes, because... Even I, with your panelists, you did not no, see this coming. Because I had the, I had the <laughs> right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga as yes. my guest of honour. Ah. So I made sure I'd balance each and every political party Interest, so yes. that they don't say it is an opposition thing. Mm. That is why I didn't picture that. If I have the first deputy prime minister, yes. why would someone think this is an opposition event? event? Yes. That's why I didn't picture it and I had got clearance from the Ministry of Health on the 16th mm. of August, stamped and signed by Dr. Harry, um, Dr. Muevesa, not Harry Muevesa, yes. So I didn't picture that because I got clearance from the university itself then on the morning of 9th at, at noon, when I, released, um, when I released the poster of Dr. Stella Nyanzi, I am called and told the venue has been taken by someone in the top administration of the university. She has an event scheduled for that same day. So I tell them, oh, well and good. Can I get another venue? 
they are like, well, it's fine. They give me a letter, I go, I get another venue, they accept, I start organizing it. At 6 p.m., the police, the fund calls me and says, you're organizing an illegal the event. Which the fund? The one of Makere? Yes, you're organizing an illegal event, the university is not aware of it, and you should cancel it. So I asked which university because I have letters from the university mm. itself. <laughs> I have emails from them because I had invited the vice chancellor yeah. to speak on behalf of the university. Then he delegated the DVCF and I mean the DVCF and A. What who is that? Finance uh, and administration. Yes. And she's a lady to speak on his behalf. Then she sent me an email delegating the dean of students to speak on her behalf. Mm. So is this a group of people that are not aware? Mm -mm. Mm. And maybe and maybe at that time let me bring in Ambassador. Mm. Ambassador, what is with this abuse within our sec within this country that we have even failed to we, we, we failed on the duty of care mm. to young people. We have failed to have our, to, to have them trust our word. You know? Mm. It, it's like mm. it started at national level where some of us don't trust anything mm -hmm. that comes out of the president's mouth. Mm -hmm. We don't trust anything that comes out of mm -hmm. parliament. Mm -hmm. And now we are reaching institutions of learning, which mm -hmm. are custodians of knowledge, and we are breaking trust. What is happening? Isabella, uh, personally, I think I would anticipate it. Because if you look at the track record mm. of this government, it doesn't keep its promises. Yes. It says one thing and does a different thing. This to me was another test mm. that they failed badly. They have become so paranoid that every, even a shadow is, <laughs> is, is risky, mm. you know. And for those who are below, they now, I think many of them probably would have wanted to let the young ladies have their space, but they are afraid. Mm. So people are afraid, there is paranoia, uh, everything that does not obviously uh, indicate that it is preserving the regime, mm. then it becomes the anti-regime. So um, this is what, what is happening, and it has been coming slowly, yes. and has reached this level, Mm -hmm. where, you know, even young ladies are such a threat. I mean, how can you look at them and call Indeed. them a threat? Can you overthrow the government? Okay, you can, but yeah. No, they can't. <laughs> they can't. And, even and, have guns. And, and they don't even intend to do that. Mm. You see, they don't intend to do that. They are students and students do what students do. They organize themselves, mm. they talk to each other, they mobilize, they empower each other, they, you know, they look out for their role models to mentor them, to help them, and that is what they were doing. Mm. Nothing illegal whatsoever. So it was absolutely uncalled for, absolutely unacceptable. Mm. And you see, this regime has made women, uh, it keeps on saying how they have empowered us, how they, we have so many women. How in, they love yes, us. Yes, how they love us. But when it comes to real test, mm. they fail. Why? Because they want women who would be yes, 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 yes. If you are not going to be saying yes, then you, are no, you, you, you cease to be a woman, mm. you know. Because yeah, even yes. when you look at what happened really in the speakership mm. uh, race, you know, uh, you, you can see that the crime uh, uh, Honorable Right Honorable Kadaga committed is that she was a woman uh, or, or in herself, mm. you know, and, and she wanted to exercise and also, you know, because we also have to be credible, yes. you know, we have to be credible, we have to, uh, you know, we cannot, uh, we don't, you know, you, you wouldn't want somebody to come and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and take your space, and then you 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 happen to become a somebody who is just a rubber stamp. Mm. No, women of sub of substance are never rubber stamps. Mm. Yes, we have our own minds. Mm. By the way, we have a future to pro to secure. Mm. 
this business of talking about securing the future, which future are they securing if when they, can't they are the denying young, girls. young women mm. to organize? Mm. What, which, which future are they talking about? Yes. Whose future are they talking about? Maybe they, they are talking about certain people's future, but not these ladies. Maybe there are other Ugandans whose future is being secured. And yes. you don't, are we on this panel? <laughs> are not part of the secure people. But coming to Shamim, because Shamim, you're. You're in charge of academics at the university. And, and in, case this com in case the question I'm going to ask you is not safe, it's okay for you to defer it, and we shall either bring it back to Ambassador or to Rebecca. But this is not the first time this has happened at the university. This is not the first time that the university give, grants permission and then takes it back. You know, On several occasions, they have canceled events. I have also been a victim of cancellation, and they, they rarely have reasons. Mm -hmm. Do you think that as a university that is supposed to be uh, the, an icon of higher education in the region, a university that is supposed to promote free thought, because university is about free thought mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. do you think that the university is living up to the standards of free thought? Or has a university been one of the institutions that has fallen into the clause of this abusive government of ours. Um, thank you so much, Isabella. I would say that uh, I, I wouldn't want to defer such a question because it's a question of university management and yes. university, which is a space in which we are living yes. and in which we are operating just as student leaders. But uh, a question of trust, it's always about what the other party is afraid of. Yes. Because why really would you stop an event from going on that is clearly not political, something that is meant for the students, and yet you claim to care about the student fraternity. So for me, it is more of, because what problem would uh, the university have with Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga? What problem would they have with uh, Stella Nyanzi? Yes, they have had their issues, but should the issues that they had a long time ago that was be solved. a hindrance? Yes. to our future because it's about us. Yes. And when you look at the, the nature of the event, mm -hmm. it is something that actually to me it was more about uh, how did it come up? Mm -hmm. We did have uh, an event earlier where we were asking these girls, why aren't you taking up positions? Why don't you look up to the people who are there? Mm -hmm. And you know they're talking about things like toxic uh, um, campaigning environment, yes. you know that lack of uh, empowerment, they don't have the guidance. and. If a toxic environment is now being engineered by the management itself, then why does it leave us, we as, as you know, the yes. young generation? So for me, I would say it's a question of trust and then a question of uh, what exactly were the university's priorities? Yes. Is it the students or is it pleasing the government? Mm. And if it's pleasing the government, then they should tell us to get somewhere else where we can fit. And but where are you <laughs> going to go? <laughs> no, because they did, did they chase us from the university. I, I, was yes. told, uh -huh. I was told, actually, one of the people I talked to on phone mm. that morning, because um, the, the, what happened in the morning was abrupt. Mm. By, the t by the end of the night, they had really given me back everything. Then in the mornings where they stop, when I'm speaking to them on phone, they are saying, in our contracts, we were told not to allow anything that would sabotage the peace of the country and the university, and your event is an anti-government So who was this coming from, this one of sabotaging the peace of the government? Was it from the policeman? From the university administration itself. The university administration said that the guild was sabotaging the, the peace of the Republic of Uganda. an anti-government event basing on the panelists. Okay, maybe on that note. <laughs> maybe on that note, let's talk systemic abuse, mm. okay? Let us talk about systemic abuse, and I'll bring in Ambassador Edith, and Rebecca, my apologies, but bring in Ambassador Edith. We are increasingly existing in a country where everywhere you go, the structures that are in that place have become abusive to us as citizens. Mm -hmm. They are abusive, they're abusing our rights to associate, mm -hmm. our rights to express ourselves. When you go to hospitals, th you're being abused. So for example, there's a time we we're dealing with an issue of rape mm. and the host, mm. uh, the private facility could not give us medical records because they said that a rape report was different from another medical record. That's abuse. Mm. When you go to police and I, I was arrested around the election period and I was told that I was running a parallel tally center 
even if I was just walking around Hotel Africana, enjoying myself, I spent three nights, two nights in jail. So what happens within a context of a country like this where everywhere you go, the systems and structures have been set up to make you look like your persona non grata to the country? And where do you run? Because, yeah. Yeah, um, it has been deliberate and systematic mm -hmm. to destroy the institutions of, of governance, mm. of human rights, yes. of everything you can think of. Mm. Everything has been destroyed. Everything has been undermined. And uh, we, uh, we were, uh, I guess we were supposed to, to submit but mm. uh, we have uh, we cannot submit yeah because we were not born and raised yes. to submit we you know when you are raising children and i'm a mother mm. you're raising girls in particular mm. and i'm a mother of girls you encourage them you 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 know you you always ask them to be courageous mm -hmm. and speak out and ask and agree, disagree, agreeably, but mm -hmm. disagree yes. if they have to. Because it's healthy. Yeah, because it is healthy, mm -hmm. because that develops them and you want them to be developed, you want them to be, you know, disciplined, but, uh, you know, uh, know who they are and that they have everything it takes to achieve whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You don't cow them down. But, uh, you know, the system here is that, uh, you know, you either or you are either with us or against us. Mm. And uh, there is uh, no effort even of government. You know, they are, you, uh, there is a book called How to w Win Friends and Influence People. Mm. If they want their, our votes, mm. if they really wanted our votes, they would be trying to win our hearts mm. but they are not interested in that because at the end of the day they know they will come with their jeeps and with their you know security apparatus and mm. they will come with the money they have impoverished almost ugandans to the extent that the ugandans they feel worthless less than the chicken that uh, you know <laughs> That is in the, in the, in their backyard. That is true. You I know? don't think they consider us human beings. Yeah. So mm. it is a very challenging situation mm. that we are in, and for me, it has been degenerating. Mm. You know, all the time. You see, challenges in life do exist, but there are certain things which are not really challenges, mm. which are outright abuse. Yes. And therefore, things like uh, torture. They are outright abuse, mm. and overnight they can be reversed because mm. you can s decide that the security apparatus is not going to do that, and mm. they will not do that, you know. Yeah. So when you have leadership that is uh, not only abusive, uh, you know, uh, physically, mm. but mm. It, it abuses our minds as well, mm. you know, abuses our uh, uh, intellectual <laughs> abilities abuses our spirituality, mm. abuses everything uh, of who we are, then, you know, it becomes very, the, the struggle has become really tough, you know. Mm. But if you look through history, all empires that have thought they were so great, they have crumbled. Mm. You know, the Roman Empire crumbled way back, uh, the you know the the you know the the uh, the the, the Mudu, Mo, Mobutus mm. were collapsed. You know he couldn't even get where to go for medical treatment. He was not allowed in his Riviera in mm. in France. Mm. So, but human beings are funny because they don't learn. Mm -mm. You know <laughs> they should have learned that this is not really good for them. Mm. You know and therefore sought to moderate or to create a, 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 a situation where we all can coexist. Yes. Because, you know, you can't wish off people who are created by the Almighty. Mm. No, you can't. So um, I want to encourage these young ladies, be courageous, 
be uh, thoughtful. You know, we are not, women generally, we are not suicidals. We don't go out just to make a case so that we can die as martyrs. Yes. No, because we have children to take care of. Mm. But if we have to fight for, for uh, against injustice, we are going to fight. Yes. Because our children don't have anything else. Mm. Our future is at stake. Mm. And uh, so this is not something we are choosing. It is something that is being Forced. imposed. It's imposed on us. On yes. us. Yeah. And maybe at, that, at this particular point, in reference to, to a note that was put out by the First Lady, I believe yesterday, I don't know whether any of you saw that note. I'm no, not I sure whether it, it is a policy statement or it was a beloved letter to her children, but it starts, dear children and those who love me, something like that. And so I'm not sure whether she also speaks in her capacity as First Lady or in her capacity as Minister of Education. But anyway, it's there. It is a note which is there, but not there. But it's a note on education. <laughs> and because it's a note on education, it's really her explaining why schools and institutions of learning are still closed. And in the absence or in the, in, within a context of closure of schools, the ideal, the idea would be that students are having alternative platforms for learning. The mm -hmm. idea would be that for primary school kids or uh, nursery school children who can't go to school, Parents are providing alternative spaces for learning, either through encouraging home visits or activities or, you know, something to get their minds going. And the idea would be that university students, young women and young men like you, would be using symposiums like that to mm -hmm. continue to build knowledge mm -hmm. and ensure that brains are not stunted. We already have stunted problems in this country without adding the lockdown. But within that context of saying that if schools and institutions of learning are closed and we are looking for alternative spaces of learning, mentorship becomes a key aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once again, this government failed on mentorship. And so, mm -hmm. Rebecca, I'm going to bring you in because you are a young woman. You have started a foundation at such a tender age. You run the Juna Foundation, but you also work for uh, the Shema Development Foundation. Now more than ever, why is mentorship important for young women like this? Why should the state be very slow in blocking platforms of thought and knowledge sharing for young women, especially within a context mm -hmm. of shrinking civic space? Thank you, Isabella. Um, mentorship is critical for young women because it's an African culture. We grow up learning different norms from our grandmothers, from our mothers, and our aunties and sisters. So um, when the young women wanted to learn how to get into these spaces, and what are the challenges, they looked up to the aunties, the grandmothers, and the women around their communities that they've seen that this government has produced. Yes. And maybe in their innocence, they did not know that this government does not like them. <laughs> does not have time for women that open their mouth a lot. <laughs> because that is patriarchy. Yes, and it even is. At family level, you see that they will say, oh, that auntie ah, is too, he talks a lot. So that is the same thing they would have expected. But also, it's good that it happened, that they can know that as you're going there, that's the fire. That is the sample beat of what is going to happen to you. But also, it's 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 also a call to government that we are saying SDGs 5, we should implement it. And we are saying Victoria, yes, we are all shouting women empowerment. Oh yeah. When it's time for campaigns, it's the women dancing, yeah, singing. Mm -hmm. But when it's time for the women to learn and teach their daughters that you know what, you can be a speaker of parliament, you can change the policies in these institutions that so they favor women, then you find police waiting for them. But it's so sad because you see in the university, that's where you learn these things. Yeah. And that, that's where internship comes in. You go and intern, see the women do different things, see the challenges. Mm -hmm. But if government is curbing that, then it's also something for us women to know that we have a lot of power mm -hmm. that we undermine. Mm -hmm. Because we are the people that push on these cultures at 
from infant level. So we also have somewhere we are going to hold ourselves to account. Mm. Because if we are talking about Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, if she was a speaker of parliament, this was something that was supposed to be done. It's us to, by the way, it, mm. it's now we don't have to play victim. We also have to come to our side and say, where did we go wrong? Mm. How come we do not have networks? Because they're saying structures. How are we not breaking these structures to find that we are entering these structures and having to say that at least let her give a call to somebody in police and say, my girls are there. Mm. How come we do not have that? Mm. And to the girls, that shows you that there is, there is a hard, hard level to climb, mm. but it also shows you that you can overcome it. Mm -hmm. You can overcome it because mm -hmm. you cannot tell me Kadaga has been there and not had challenges, mm. but she has managed. Mm. You are looking at Stella Nyanzi, what they write about her. She does not look like the, the Proverbs woman. Proverbs started to yeah. <laughs> she, she spilled over. You see, and, and, and yes. someone is going to come and tell you, no, she's not the right person. Yeah. But who is the right person then? And for me, I would want to tell the young women, if it wasn't for the women before, I wouldn't be doing the work I'm doing. Mm. It doesn't mean there are no challenges. Sure. They are. Mm. But that is one step at a time. You found this reorganized. If they close the, the university, use your social media. Because mm -hmm. I think it was Ponzile that told us when we were in Addis that you young women are very lucky. You have social media. Mm -hmm. Use social media and organize. Mm -hmm. If they shut social media, record and send out via email. Mm -hmm. Because now we are talking about what has happened, but it's, it's now going to come to a week. Mm -hmm. And then what? We re-strategize, we go back to the drawing board and say, you know what, how do we ensure that we voice these concerns? Because even it shows you that in the police, there are young women that are suffering. Yes. Mm -hmm. In those institutions, you're saying that the, 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 gov the management say this and this. It means there are young women that are suffering, and especially around those issues of rape. Mm. If, if a lecturer asks you for something, something, your body, eh? And, and they are protected. How do we get our person, our young woman, inside to change the status quo? Mm -hmm. And for government, mm. if they are holding you at university, then you're not going to get there when you grow. Mm -hmm. So you need to you need to, to to use your woman power and challenge them because there there is power that men do not have that we do have, mm. and challenge them and keep moving forward because in the long run. It's for our grandchildren and our children. The same way the same women before mm. us made it. Mm. Mm. And that's it. Mm. Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much. Yes, Noella, you have something to say. Yes. Yes. And then me, um, personally, mm. I felt like, um, you know, with, with regardless of saying this symposium is for knowledge and what, it mm. also saves us of so many vices. Mm. Right now we have girls dropping out of school and what. Mm. So if they attend more of these programs and listen to the challenges yeah, these yeah. other women have gone yeah. through, mm. they are encouraged to stay regardless of schools being locked. They are mm. saying, you know what, let me just stay in the system mm. till I finish and get there like the rest of these women. Mm. So we are serving a lot of uh, vices with this one program we are doing which is something they don't want to see. Mm. And then I got people on Twitter asking me that time, the time I was advertising my event, because I invested so much, I really wanted it to happen. To happen. And it because, can still happen. Yes. 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 So I, really I wanted happen. it to reach out so many people, not just Makerere. Mm. That's why I didn't restrict it to advertising within Makerere only. Mm. I broke everywhere. So I got people asking that, but the vice president is a lady, the, the, the prime minister is a lady and all that. that I told them exactly, yeah. these people are afraid, they are doing it as a flower. Some, that's why I said some ladies are flowers of patriarchy. Mm. They, they will be up there, but not helping fellow women grow. Mm. And then they'll be saying, but we are emancipated as women, don't you mm. see we are here? But who is going to take up your spaces when you retire or die? Mm. It's mm -hmm. these young girls that are mm -hmm. coming up. This is why we are supposed to mentor them mm -hmm. at this early age to replace you and even replace some of these men yeah. in these places. Mm -hmm. So I felt like this, for someone to say, we, but, but the, the cabinet this time around has more women. 
He tells more women, but how many are what you? What are they doing? In, but what are they doing? Okay, yes, how many are you? But what are they also doing? How many yes. are you? The, 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 the Prime Minister, when we called out for them to, to support stranded students mm. back in June, was it June? Mm. We called out to them, we told them there were girls who were stuck. Mm. And as a lady, we thought she would think like, okay, let me add students just because there is girls on this yeah. list of 600 students. We have 400 girls. Let me add the students on the list mm. so that maybe these girls can get this 100,000 and maybe buy pads or something. Yeah. She came out and said, I don't expect Ugandan students to be stranded, so I'll not help students. Wow. That was a response she gave us. But w did she care to know why these students stayed? Some mm. had COVID, some had parents with COVID back mm. home, so they had to stay. The lockdown started partially, all these things. But this is a woman refusing to help. Mm. Help students. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So that's why I say some of these women are just flowers of patriarchy. They are used mm. to confuse us as women, mm. that women are being helped. Mm. So they are not even using their platforms to raise more women. Because I believe the positions we have, you would maybe fo find the High Excellence Alupo making these programs, the symposiums, to, to, to educate more girls to be like her. You would find all these women, but what are they doing? The Minister of Education herself is a lady. But what is she doing to the, to the education sector? She's crippling it, and her husband comes out to say... She wrote girls us can, a letter yesterday. She, the, the, the husband <laughs> comes out to say, um, you know what? We, 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 these girls can get pregnant but not die of COVID. Yeah. So they are okay with teenage pregnancies yeah. as long as the girls don't get COVID. Mm. But these girls privilege. are dropping yeah, but that is also, also a, a, privilege. A, a, a deception. That yes. is a complete deception. Yes, and as because a minister see, of education, she as a woman, better. and as a wife to yes. the president, she should have come out and said something, mm. but she went silent about that, that statement. So that shows us what kind of women we have out there that are trying to pretend to hold the candle for women because they are not holding it, they are pretending. Mm. Mm. And, and, and mm -hmm. I hear you, but, I, I, but there's something that you said. You talked about a lot of girls dropping out of school. And I know, that, I, I, know that, I know that that's the reality, that a lot of girls are dropping out, a lot of girls have fallen pregnant. A lot of girls have had to be married off because of the pandemic. Is the, does the university have any system of tracking its students to figure out who is still with us? No. No. But how? Aren't you, uh, do, what's do your they... number in the... What, what's what's, what's Makai University's ranking in Africa? We have dropped to 13. Oh, oh, no, but you're still among the 13. top 15. No, you don't have... From 3 to 8 to 13 is bad. <laughs> yes, very, very bad. It's and in no wonder. And in okay. No wonder. Mm. <laughs> okay, you really dropped 3 to 8. To <laughs> 3 to 8 to 15. Eh? To, yeah, and to 13. 13. And, and we shouldn't be laughing, but... Mm. But it, again, in a country which is among the five countries who, which have not yet opened up their education systems, an institution of higher learning like Makere should have a tracking system for their students. Exactly. They, we and should, it we should, shouldn't be difficult. And it shouldn't in be difficult. Era, in this with an with technical, you know. And they have advantage. an entire department of computer mm. science and technology, isn't it? But you're not tracking anyone. Uh, the time I had just been appointed as an academics minister, yes. I went ahead to inquire and say, so how many students are actually in Makere University? And I was told it's a crime to know the exact number of students in the universe. Yeah, what oh, is it is a crime. It's a crime. Yes, oh, which law yes, is this? Yes, Between 35 and 40,000. <laughs> is this acceptable? So, so, no, it is not. It is no. acceptable. Absolutely <laughs> not okay, acceptable. I was wondering, so it what is this actually? I mean, what is this? What is so unique about knowing the numbers? And, and the Are you the Pakwach bridge <laughs> that you're protected like this? To say when, when, when we're having the intake, we always have this percentage and this percentage, but by the time we are, we are, we always had more men than girls, but by the time we are graduating, we have only a certain percentage is off, and then there is 52% girls graduating and 48% boys no, graduating. But <laughs> where did the others go? But you see, there is no this is an issue of that. accountability yeah, and yeah. planning. So yes. one of the things you as young <laughs> women should have is an issue of accountability and the management yes. of your systems. Absolutely. And that is where you press on, because you're not going to press on today and they refuse to give you and then you go back. Mm -hmm. You press on, you write, you, 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 because advocacy takes time. No. It takes time because when they come and give you that, it's not enough of an answer. Never take no, no. for an answer. No, as, as a government, we have pushed from everywhere. We have pushed that I who sits on the university council, I do ask, 
and I'm not given a clear uh, no, answer. She, yes, issue. she oh. sits on the Senate board. They are giving her a different answer. We have someone sitting on quality assurance is having a different answer. So how does so Makere collect revenue? You, they just tell you we estimate. That no, they do. They, you know, uh, for me, ambassador, but no, this is smells, disturbing. But yes. It just smells yeah. of some form of corruption. Mm. Yeah. Because if you, you know, you can, if you cannot account yeah. for the revenue you are getting, mm. not only the revenue, but for the bodies, the students yes. uh, that you, you, you have been entrusted uh, with, then it is a deliberate. It is deliberate. That is why they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, because, you know, once there is a transparency, uh, then the corruption becomes difficult. But also they don't want to account to, pa to parents. I think it is important that mm. we talk about education. Yes. Because education is the only equalizer yes. that I do know. In society. You know, in yes. society. Now our children are at home. And yet they have opened up the Chikubos. Mm. They have opened up for parents to go out and work, which is good. Even the bars, you know? the expiry date ended uh -huh. last week. So, so well, uh, but, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the COVID, COVID can very easily, if it is there, it can easily come from Chikubo and yeah. go to the, 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 the students at home. Mm. So there is no logic what, uh, whatsoever. You see, uh, the, the other unfortunate thing is that our government is immune to logic. Yeah. Eh. That one is a quotable quote. <laughs> they are immune to logic. It is immune to logic. <laughs> they will not, uh, they cannot explain anything and say we are doing this, this because of this and everybody this can see that this is the logic. You know, none of us wants to die of COVID. So we are all very, you know, look, look at how we are, you know, uh, dressed up, mm. you know, in these beautiful uh, masks. It's because we believe that it is, we have to protect ourselves and protect each other. Mm. But this business of keeping children home, a whole generation is Madame going to be dropped out. You hmm? said your children, but mm -hmm. what you do not know, that the children of the rich, because you've said education is an equalizer, the children of the rich are using internet exactly. and studying. But the exactly. rural child mm -hmm. is busy fetching water and, you know, they say... And they helping at home. And helping at home. Yes. So there is no equalizer here. No, it can equalize because I'm telling you this because I was... I, I, I went to a village school. I come from the village. I was, you know, I'm a product of a village demonstration school. At that time, those schools were teaching and we were learning and we were graduating from there. I went to Gayaza High School, you know, uh, with uh, 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 children whose parents were better off than my own. And here I am. So. I think I'm justified to say that it is an equalizer. If people are given opportunities, because God has not condemned the children of the poor to have no brains, mm. they can come out. But, you know, this government has decided that children should remain home in spite of the, all the problems. So a generation is being uh, left Lost, out. Yes. Our neighbors, they are all going to, their children are all going to school. So even within the East African context, we, Uganda will be backward. And yes, we used to be at the forefront. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and the, the, all the attendance. So the haves and have not will, uh, you know. So will, the gap will continue the to gap widen. Will, widen. Yes, the yeah. gap will widen. And uh, poverty will uh, continue to escalate. So, and, and if they were really even conscious of security, there is no security in poverty. Yeah. Poverty cannot preserve security, mm -hmm. you know. 
Ignorance cannot preserve security. You can imagine, I sometimes say it, that if the founding fathers of, of America, United States of America, thought like our leaders, would do America be a superpower? No. All these other countries, oh, Singapore, take Singapore, which was at our level mm. when we got independence. So I just don't even, I have failed to understand the logic, the mindset of our leaders. But we've also just you know? agreed that they are immune to logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are immune, but they should at least, you know, you see, well, if you have uh, children and you have grandchildren like they do, mm. you would be thinking for the grandchildren, the society they are going to grow in. But, 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 but see, th that is on the basis that, they, that, that we are of interest yeah. to the yeah. state. Mm. Under normal circumstances, if, as a, if a leader is interested in the well-being of the people that they oversee, some of these things should come naturally. Unfortunately for us, that is not the case. The, th there are people that they are planning for. I don't know that, whether they are cows, or, but we are not the ones. And I think that is problematic. But, but in the same breath, um, so 15th, 15th of September is World Democracy Day. Mm. And uh, at, uh, it's an internationally celebrated holiday, I mean, um, mm. day. day. And on that day, we, we look back on the basics, the, the tenets of democracy. Given the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, are we like, okay, that moved from 3 to 5 to 13 in terms of, in terms of numbering? Like, is our democracy scared? It was already bad. But Ambassador Edith, how badly off have we fallen within this unique context? Of course, within the university context, we see that there's already a big governance issue there. But country level, has COVID aided our growth in democracy or has it just worsened our problems? It has worsened our problem because they have taken advantage of it. Yes. Mm. In terms of corruption, mm. you know, in terms of uh, uh, shrinking the spaces, mm. you know, even when we put on masks, then they will say it is not good enough. Yes. You know, when, even when they, they are trying even to invade the space, you know, the internet, mm. uh, so that we cannot even use that. But uh, let me really say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is not a prophecy mm. uh, as such, but uh, um, I happen to study in the former Soviet Union. Yes. And I could see by the time I left and I was, I didn't have, I was, uh, you know, doing civil engineering and therefore really not interested in political in science politics, and, yes. uh, and so forth. And now here you are, but yes. But, yeah, <laughs> by the grace of God. <laughs> but I could see yeah. mm. and I told some of my friends that that system that I happened to, or, you know, to be in mm. and therefore had seen firsthand was not sustainable. Mm. This system is not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And, uh, you know, they, you, you are saying they are planning for their children. You Are they planning them on the moon? I, oh. mm, yeah, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> yes, uh, they are planning for them. I am sure even uh, even uh, Gaddafi planned. Mm. I am very sure that Mobutu planned, uh, you know, uh, Kampauri planned, mm. and all those people planned. They planned adequately. Yes, yeah. but you know, they can plan, they, but they cannot execute because only God mm. can, execute. can execute. But also as we speak about World Democracy Day, and I'll ask the other panelists to come in and weigh in on the, on the, on the issues around the freedom to associate, the freedom to express yourself, the right to information, but also the right to justice, to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to speedy trials, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I, and, and when I talk about that, I just re realized that I think I'm still supposed to be reporting for Bond. But I, I don't understand why, but <laughs> I am here, you know? And I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, but I don't understand why I'm still reporting for Bond. I, I'm not. But also within the same breath, you remember people like Nicolas Opio, mm -hmm. you know, who were arrested last year 
uh, during the during the Christmas period, spent Christmas in jail, came out. Mm. We were mm. in court with Nicholas last week, uh, and a, a motion to dismiss mm. uh, was filed because that because since December the state has kept saying they are investigating, we are investigating, we are investigating. So last week the judge said, but on what grounds did you arrest this man? Exactly. If we are in September and you're still investigating, you know? And so they were instructed to commit him before Wednesday. But, you know, and, and this is Nicholas. This is Nicholas Opio, a celebrated, you know, human, right. human rights lawyer. Mm -hmm. So how about Omuntu Wawansi? Yes. You know, how many citizens do we have in this country? who do not have the luxury of the world following up on their cases so that they can have ease of access to justice. Yeah. You know, are we, are, are, do we truly want to celebrate World Democracy Day as a country this year? Or should we just go and wear a sackcloth and mourn? Mm -hmm. Yes, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like that. That. I, I, I know, uh, just mourn. <laughs> Isabel, I think we need to go back to who sold us to us democracy. How did it start and what did we adopt? And I believe that most people will use democracy to keep people poor. Yeah. And most of the times, uh, you may think it's, 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 it's intentional. It's intentional. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot lead people that have brains and their money and assets. You have to keep people poor and lead them very well. Yeah. They come keep begging you. If you, make, if you make the justice system hard, to access, mm. they'll come and tell you, oh, our leader, now here is the problem. I went there, they are not giving me my papers. Mm. The lawyer has not come. Now you solve the problem, you look like a good leader. Yes. Mm. Another person will come and tell you, oh, now the, this person grabbed my land. I went to, to, to the cow to help me. The cow did not help me. But when the cow was about to also help you, there was another network that also told him, stop it. Mm. So you get to know that there is a lot in the so-called democracy. Yeah. And for the women in particular, I want to focus for the women in rural areas, it keeps them so impoverished. Yeah. And they, they might not come up. Yeah. A few, one, two, three will come up, but they will be hit on the head. Yeah. Because if they get up, they will raise other women and tell them, no, this is not the constitution. So you see the problem, they'll say that Isabella is, is very well educated. She can read the constitution. Now let's stop Isabella. Let's bring a little bit of what she has done before and put it in the media. Let her get this passed. And that is what is going to happen. Because if you're talking about Nicholas or Pio, you have created mistrust among the people. Yeah. So no, a few people are going to go to him and tell him, can you take, help me in my court case? Like, ah, that man, number one, you might go to him with him in court yeah. and then they arrest him there. <laughs> but he also has his problems. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, yeah. it's, it, then you're like, ah, but this man also, if he stole this money, how is he going to help me in my case? Are you seeing the mistrust? Yeah. So now you end up going back to the system. Yeah. And it's intentional and until you see that, we are going to keep going around corners and corners. And until we empower people, they can sit and talk about democracy and how it benefits them. They can read the constitution. They know their human rights. But most people do not know that they have a right. Even us that, are, that know a little bit of mentorship and have been mentored, yeah. you read before the police and you get timid. Yes. They yes. have to yes. remove your shoes. <laughs> they bring for you a case you've done and you're like, what? By the time you call the lawyer, they have the phone. Yeah. But if you are somebody, you have a little bit of money, you're able to call the network. Mm -hmm. So you cannot talk about democracy and not uh, talk about economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk about enhancing the capacity and knowledge of the people. This will all continue as long as people do not know their rights. People are not economically empowered to say, you know what, you as a lawyer are supposed to represent me. Where are you? I have fired you and gotten another one. And when you look at how in COVID it has amplified gender-based violence. Mm. Even these women, sometimes I look at these women leaders and, and, and a bit full of and say, I won't hold them to account fully. 
because the gender-based violence they are facing in the name of democracy holds them from speaking up. Imagine you're the first lady of this country. You're also the minister of education and your husband has said something and then you go and say something different. Your mother and ah, a grandmother. What is your immunity? Mm. Mm. Tomorrow he tells you, hey, get out of my house and put in a new first lady. And all the things. And put in a new first lady. And I, I think you've seen Kenya where they removed some, is it protection from, from one of, of their leaders? And tomorrow you as a first lady, you do not have security. You're also now going to face the same things a local woman faces. So we still have a long way to go. But for me, I believe with economic empowerment of people, we'll be able to achieve a little bit, a few steps. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And I, and I hear you. I hear you. But again, when you talk about democracy, and then you talk about the first lady and the local woman, at the end of the day, the tenets of democracy, I think, dictate that. Yes. That there's fairness. There's you know, clear. there's dignity. There's... Uh, there's equality before the law. Mm -hmm. You know, th that's what we are aspiring for. When we yes. talk about association, yes. it is, it's to ensure that you have, that, 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 mm. that, that there's justice. You know, so at the end of the day, there there's ought the to be freedom. justice for all. For the first lady who drops off, yeah. for the woman in my village who, you know, there ought to be a system of justice to which all of them can come to yeah. and, get, and, and get redress. Yeah. But I will come to Shamim and uh, Noella as we close the show and say that the universities are supposed to embody the ideals of society. <laughs> mm. You know, the ideals of society that if we're talking about, if we're talking about functional free and fair elections, we should be able to see them at mm. the university. When we're talking mm. about values in a country, mm. they, should be a to, they should be able to be embodied at the university. When we're talking about fairness and justice, without remembering that your vice president, I mean, your guild, what, what, your vice chancellor has expelled people continuously, but you're talking about, you know, you're saying that there ought to be freedom to associate, freedom to express at the basic level of university. So when we, as we celebrate uh, World Democracy Day on the 15th of, of, um, of, of, of September, which is on Wednesday, is there a reason to celebrate it at university level do you, do, do, do you, do that, does the institution of higher learning still embody what it should embody? And, and, and what do we do for the generations to come? Because sanity must be, must come back. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Isabella. I would say that uh, democracy as uh, an institution is not something that we have really taken up. I would uh, first of all cite an example. We've been serving on the guild and mark the word we have been, yes. meaning that we are actually yes. no longer serving yes. as a guild. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, so yes, the speaker, the speaker You are dissolved yesterday. How? You wait. What wait. happened? Because that you organized the symposium. No, 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 no. The speaker No, but your symposium to... might have been the reason for this. But, but please go tell. ahead. Yes, yeah, so the speaker calls us for a meeting <laughs> and actually not a session on a WhatsApp group and tells us we have important updates from the speaker's chambers. Uh-huh. And, you know, we're telling him that's not how you invite people to a session. Yes. Put it in writing, mm. give us the agenda, and mm -hmm. what is the session going to be about? Yes. Because we need to prepare mm -hmm. as a gov as the executive as well as but the But it's not an emergency, so it should have... Th about anyway, three uh -huh. days, yes. too. Yeah, so we complain and... 24 hours. So he okay. says, uh, oh, if sorry. you want, you come. <laughs> And if you don't want, don't come. Hours. He said, if you want, come, don't come. If you don't want, don't <laughs> come. Those who attend will benefit. <laughs> so, you know, we all just let it be. Sounds and like then, a uh, seven. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you so Let's much. Go. <laughs> in our room. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, so the um, yeah. so yeah. students attend, I think, about 40 mm. Uh, mm. with the gallery inclusive, which does not even make quorum. Mm. But then the meeting went on, and he tells us, well, Second semester started on 30th August and you've been dissolved. And due to the whole COVID situation, we cannot even convene the 100 GRCs to vote for the electoral commission. Yeah. So because of that, the electoral commission is going to be appointed by the caretaker government. By me. <laughs> of oh, which you are part a of the caretaker By him, oh, the caretaker government. <laughs> yes. As your problems are many, what? but anyway. <laughs> 
Yes, so I think that brings us down to the fact yes. that this state... And this is during the week of World Democracy. Does he at least yes. know that we are celebrating? No, he doesn't. World Democracy no, Day. I, I, I don't oh, he was being chased that morning of the symposium, actually, when I was standing with you, he was running up and down to collect signatures to dissolve us. Wow. Oh, please go ahead. Okay. And it is constitutionally is... allowed or what? No. The so it's not officially started. It's it is the same so thing like... Exactly. So we are supposed to wait for others to come. Then when they're on track, the constitution says 14 days into the semester. Wow. So for him, because the semester power. started for, for for finalists, he's saying we are 14 days into the semester. <laughs> Shamim, oh. yes, please. Um, I, I still want to bring us to a point that... Uh, we are looking at two generations here. Mm. We have the generation of the current leaders in government, and then we have we, the young generation. So as the other generation, I feel they have achieved what they would have wanted to achieve, so they no longer have anything to do with us. Mm. But they have done a very good job when it comes to planting seeds and seedlings that will manifest what they stand for. Because the speaker we are talking about here in question is actually an NRM candidate. I mean, what would I say? He's NRM. He comes out and says, this is going to be our next guild president. Come what like may. Exactly. He posts on his status, this is the 87th guild president. Come what may. Three weeks down the road, he has chased us and, and he's appointing his own EC. What does that mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and unfortunately, we even have to question such a thing, we have to fight as though it's actually not obvious. So to me, I, I believe that uh, even we as the young generation, we still have those few that feel they're actually bigger than others. Entitled. So Exactly. So I don't think that as Makere University, we actually have the audacity to be celebrating, you know, World Democracy Day. And then even now, leave alone just the guild, it comes back to the fact that the state has uh, mastered the art of intimidation. Mm. Prior to her event uh, with Women in Leadership Symposium, the police arrived at the venue before we, the people who were actually invited. And attendance was on invitation. So what were they looking for? <laughs> we didn't invite them. They called the guild president and told him, if your vice president arrives here, we are ordered to arrest her. So I would say that uh, it's, it still comes back to the university mm. and their integrity because uh, it's so wrong to find that you can find, uh, we, had, we have what we call the tear gas arena mm. where, you know, they had actually camped, we had the army staying within the university. And we're actually students. I mean, I'm moving at night and I'm finding people marching. As if you're terrorists. Yes, so, so if, if someone, when will I even ever shout way away in case food is actually not marching to the standards? Yeah. When will I shout <laughs> over 15% <laughs> when in any direction? I when there are guns and in any direction. <laughs> they it actually became know, a barrack. Recently, I think they opened some halls of residence and some were still closed. But then we have these two halls, the Nkrumah and Nisiruya, that refer to themselves as, as you know, North Court. Yes. So if someone is staying here, it's more or less like they're staying there. But, you know, instead of telling them now, you know, it's, we didn't open this hall of residence, we opened this one, they just deployed. deployed. You're lying. The inside. Well, the were there. And the country <laughs> doesn't and know. this is a university. <laughs> and, and mm. so uh, uh, with, with a functional governance system, which means that your, stru your leadership He's yes. actually in bed yeah. with a state and is out to continuously exactly. abuse you. So, so you find that uh, it comes to a situation where even when we're having campaigns, you'll still find people, you know, firing tear gas. For what? In a campaign. We are students. These are campaigns. Yes. Campaign. So that is a clear evidence of what actually happened during the people power campaigns, that they were shooting people and, you know, killing people in broad daylight. And we, we kept quiet. We didn't do anything, and what have we done till now? And then you find that uh, the lives of Ugandans have been lowered to actually having prices attached to them. That when I come out and complain that my son, my, my mother was shot, they'll tell me, we're going to compensate you. Shall give you we are going to give you day. some amount of money. You cannot buy people's lives. You cannot buy people's lives. The two millions cannot take me to school. They cannot give back the care that my mother has been giving me. Exactly. So, and uh, uh, to me, I would feel that uh, we have to come out and fight. 
we have to stand for what we believe in because uh, even we as a uh, student leadership, Noel and I looking at these uh, people being deployed and then we just fold our hands and say, okay, now we are going to organize our event out outside the university. Mm. Why? We're organizing it for students. Mm. And if this is a university, it is our space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are the reason the university is there. Mm. We are still paying our functional taxes. fees even uh, if we are home. <laughs> You're paying functional fees yes. while at home. We're paying, we're paying functional fees. Over 700,000, that's the money they're using to maintain the structures they're chasing us for. Yeah. Anyway, let's, yes, you people have become <laughs> the enemies of this. Ah. Of this. That's, we, we, for us, we look like we don't have any more problems, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, yes, uh, Noella. my thing was blended. Mm. It had each, each and every political party was represented. NRM, yeah. and um, FDC, NUP, UPC, mm. each political party was, was represented. We have iPod yes. that unites all of them. But I have this event that unites everyone, mm. and we say it's anti-government. Shouldn't iPod go? We are immune to logic. <laughs> 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 because this is the question you get. And, yes, and yes. if we are raised with this fear, yeah. then we are going to grow up um, just being submissive. Mm. If we are going to grow up being submissive, and that is what they want to instill in us. They want to come out and lie to us that there is democracy, you should do this and do that, but Makerere has the deep state in it. We know it, and we see it, and that's why they are putting the army there, because they know students of Makere will not settle if there is any injustice, and they will come out and demonstrate. So you, you saw what happened in 2019 over the tuition in, uh, issue. We are students who are being broken, disabled students. Leave us why? Yes. They break into your room, you, they say clearly you have crutches, they get you, break your legs. The legs are already broken. You're blind. They pull you out and all that, and we still lie that we have democracy. And so I, I believe if institutions were to celebrate democra World Democracy Day, Makere should not be listed amongst those that should celebrate it. Because we have first everything first hand. We have first everything first hand. Actually, we always have a statement that uh, Makere is a little Uganda. You indeed. So oh yes, and it is. Yeah. You're going to start and from there. Yes, yes. They know what the and rightfully so. The rightfully so. The, 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 the mm, yes. general elite winners were in Makere yes. leading strikes. Mm. So mm -hmm. they know what they know. Makere yeah, exactly. is capable of. Mm. That is why they will suppress the voices of Makereans with first. each opportunity they get. Ladies, ladies, we succeed. need to come to an end. <laughs> Can we I need say to bring the show to an end. Yes, Ambassador. Yes. Yeah, um, what I wanted to say, yes. I want to talk to the women out there, yes. especially the women leaders, mm. the vice president, the prime minister, the, you know, all those women. Uh, you have let us down because this couldn't be happening when mm. you are supposed to be in power. Under your watch, yes. Yes. Uh, you cannot tell me that uh, you do not know or you have not heard. Mm. And if you ha genuinely don't know and you haven't heard, please come out. We want our, uh, our girls, we want our young women to be liberated, to be empowered, not disempowered. To be encouraged, not to be discouraged. We want them to know that we women who have had opportunities, they too need their opportunity. And the time is now. And therefore, you know, I, I, I think it is, it is good to say that, uh, yeah, you, you must say, you know, it is a struggle. Mm. It is a struggle. It is always double jeopardy to be a, a, a woman and a young woman for that matter. And uh, it is also a double jeopardy when you have other women who have risen on other women's shoulders, oh, yeah. not caring for mm. your issues. And therefore, I just want to encourage you, remain courageous, remain resilient, remain mm. strong. Mm. Do not allow anybody to crush your mind because your mind is yours. It mm. was given by God. Mm. And you know, it is a struggle that we are going to win. We shall win it because it is a justified struggle. And therefore, you know, um, yeah, we shall overcome.
I know we shall overcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank Isabel. you. Thank you, Ambassador. Yes. And uh, so to Ambassador Edith, to Rebecca, to Noella, and to Shamim. Thank you very much for being guests on uh, on the Civic Space TV. Thank you for honoring the invitation of the women's TV show. I hope that all of you can mm. come back again when yes. you're invited. Mm. And to the audience, thank you for being with us this afternoon. To every woman that is watching, we cannot shy away from conversations on governance. Mm. We cannot shy away from pushing back on the excesses of power. Mm. We cannot shy away from questioning. Mm. We can also not shy away from intellectual discourse. Mm. It is not limited to a particular gender. It is something that both men and women must be involved in. Mm. We also can't be the people who keep quiet when people like Shamim and Noella organize events mm. and the state brutalizes them. Brutality should stop with our generation. Mm. It is wrong that it's extended to the younger generation because from them it will be our nieces, our daughters, who will be brutalized by police. And so we must speak out against impunity. Mm. And even as we celebrate the World Democracy Day, may we remember that every citizen has the right to express themselves. Mm. Every citizen has the right to associate. Mm. Every citizen has the right to access speedy justice within mm. our context. Mm. Every citizen has the right to be protected. And so let us celebrate the World Democracy Day while reflecting on what these things mean within our context as Ugandans. Thank you very much and have a lovely afternoon. Thank you.